of the book, we got three minutes. Tonight, we're gonna beat the book. Here's the fire engine, Sergeant. Let's move out. In today's field artillery, the emphasis is on training and motivation. Because a high-tech system like this Army rocket launcher is only as good as the people who run it. With its digital fire control network for swift, silent, and secret communication and electronic navigation to find a pinpoint in the night. Stand by. Arm rockets. Fire. Can we beat the book, Sergeant? We rewrote the book. Wow. Hello again, everyone. It's me, Matsmus, and thank you so much for joining me on this video today. As you just saw by that absolutely outstanding US Army commercial, we are discussing guided missiles and particularly the multiple launch rocket system. Now, the MLRS, which has been utilized by many different countries, have its own different weapons platforms that carry them into the battlefield. You know, the M270, which we're going to be discussing today, is not the only MLRS out there. Of course, we have many different weapons platforms, which I will discuss in the future in different videos, and some videos have already done. But the M270 definitely strikes out as one of the more popular or well-known multiple launch rocket systems out there. Now the M270 is obviously of US design but is being utilized by multiple different countries and in today's video we're going to go over the overview, the history and what it is today. So let's just get straight into it. So the United States Army introduced a new armored self-propelled multiple tube rocket launcher in 1977. The primary MLRS mission was counter battery fire which basically means I'm going to try and kill the artillery that is trying to kill me as quickly as possible. Secondary missions included suppression of enemy air defense systems and interdiction fires against targets such as troops, unarmored equipment, and command and control centers from long distances. Two companies were awarded the MLRS development contracts to build prototypes of the new rocket artillery system. Loral Vault Systems Corporation won the production contract in 1980 as the prime contractor. The first production units were delivered to the Army in 1982. By the time production of the M270 MLRS was completed in 1995, the Army and the Army National Guard had over 800 units in service. The US Army also calls the M270 MLRS a self-propelled loader launcher, or SPLL. The MLRS consists of a M269 launcher loader module, or LLM, that sits on the rear cargo bay of an M933 carrier vehicle. The large, box-like launcher is raised and lowered with very powerful hydraulic systems. The launcher contains two bays, each which houses a pod containing six 227mm M26 rockets in its sealed launching tubes. Each rocket is around about 13 feet long and weighs a whopping 676 pounds. As with all rockets, the M26 is a dumb rocket. However, multiple launch rocket systems have advanced drastically since its initial design, as there are now guided weapons platforms and extended range rockets. For the basic round, the flight trajectory depends on the elevation of the LLM launcher tube at the time the rockets are fired. The original M26 round had 644 small individual M77 dual purpose improved conventional munitions or DPICM inside the warhead section of the M26 rockets. The dual purpose designation means the munitions are equally effective at actually engaging armoured fighting vehicles too. The M270 MLRS launch vehicle employs a shoot and scoop movement and tactic to enhance its survivability. Basically launch as much firepower as humanly possible and then drive out of the area as quickly as you can. Launcher crews of three use the onboard electronic fire control system or FCS to download mission details while positioned in a hide area. Then all they have to do is quickly move to the launch area, recalculate based on the new position and fire up to 12 rockets then leave the launch area, all within around 3 minutes. This is perfect for the shoot and scoot tactic. Being able to fire 12 rounds of this kind of munition onto a target area is extremely effective as counter battery fire, and even more so in engaging targets with indirect fire, such as heavy gun positions, tank battalions, whatever it may be. These things are actually kind of creating an aerial denial screen if needed for an entire brigade if they had to. The amount of surface area that these rockets and these munitions can cover is astonishing. One rocket normally with the type of ammunition used in the old days could take out an entire football field. 
Now, cluster munitions are a little bit of a technicality that we don't really want to talk about today because a lot of controversy spawns around that. But let's just say that this vehicle was able to take out grid squares. This is a grid square killer. That's what its name was, a grid square killer. For the fact that in 12 rockets, it could actually knock out nearly any infantry bound or soft skin vehicle in that area. The rocket system, however, was beginning to show its age by the late 1990s. Most of the electronic hardware was really no longer in production and the software was completely obsolete. Another problem became apparent during Operation Desert Storm in 1991, which was the slow reload times. This was a huge problem to all rocket artillery though. Highly mobile enemy formations could easily move to new positions during the time it took to reload these huge rocket launchers. To address these problems, the army deployed the first new M270A1 MLRS units in 2000. The biggest improvements to the M270A1 upgrade was the new fire control system, but also the system on which to actually load the rockets into the boxes. Now, although the vehicle does have a three-person crew for optimal performance, a single crew member can actually perform all the operations needed to have this thing functioning, including driving, aiming, firing, loading, maintenance, you name it, this vehicle can pretty much be operated by one individual. That's not saying it's very effective at doing so, however it does give a bit of a game changer during that Cold War period where, you know, attrition was a big thing. You know, if you lost a couple of soldiers on the battlefield, two more had to pull them off, etc. Whatever else it may be, in terms of trying to reduce numbers of your enemy force, one person could operate these things. You wouldn't have to have a full crew of three if it really came down to it. And in, back in those days, that was quite important, you know, to not have to worry about having, you know, these heavy artillery guns requiring five, four, three, ten people crews to load them, maintain them, move them. Uh, these things don't need that. It's, it's very simple. You get in the driver's seat or you get in the fire control seat and off you go. The MLRS has been designed to operate with a minimum of personnel. There are only three men in an MLRS crew compared to 11 on an M110 howitzer. The loading of large rockets has been simplified by automation. The system uh, is uh, fairly easy to load. After you're done with a fire mission, you go to a load supply point. What you do is rotate the uh, LLM. Uh, you have a menu inside that tells you where you want to position the LLM. You would download your expended pods, move your LLM onto the uh, the ammunition, you hook it up and you just lift it up and put your booms back in, press stow and the system automatically go to the stow position and you're, you're ready to hit the firing point and shoot again. The rockets themselves can actually be fired individually or in ripples of 2 to 12. Accuracy is maintained in all firing modes though because the computer re-aims the launcher between rounds. The MLRS can be readily transported also to different areas of operation, for example by the C-5 transporter aircraft or by train. MLRS has excellent cross-country capability and a road speed of roughly 64 km an hour. The vehicle has been very heavily combat proven and has been in operational service with over 14 different countries, including Denmark, France, Germany, Greece, Israel, Italy, Japan, South Korea, Netherlands, Norway, Turkey and obviously the UK. This system has also been built in Europe by international consortium of companies from France, Germany, Italy and the United Kingdom. In January 2006, it was agreed that two batteries of MLRS, nine launchers a battery, were to be transferred from the Netherlands to Finland. The systems were delivered in February 2007. MLRS was deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom in March and April of 2003. The US Army fielded the upgraded N270A1 launchers and the new ATAX-MS, quick reaction missile system in February 2011. The US Army placed a $221 million order for the M270 launcher upgrade kits. In May 2011, the Finnish Army placed a $45.3 million order to upgrade its 22 M270 MLRS launchers and the upgrade enables the launchers to fire the GPS guided munitions. Of course, the United Kingdom also upgraded their systems, and I was actually there when they launched them in Afghanistan. Terrifying to be woken up at 3 in the morning by the sound of 12 of these things being launched at full blast, literally 400 meters away from you. Pretty scary stuff, and I must admit, uh, one of the most terrifying moments I've ever had being woken up to before is by a full salvo of GMLRS. <laughs> Lockheed Martin developed a new extended range missile known as the GMLRS, which has a range of more than 70 kilometers. 
The GMLRS XM30 rocket has a GPS or global positioning system, inertial guidance package, and a small canards on the rocket and the nose to enhance its accuracy. The missiles completed system development and demonstration tests in December 2002 and entered low rate initial production in 2003. In August 2005, the United Kingdom placed a contract for the GMLRS, becoming the first international customer. It entered the service with the United Kingdom's Royal Artillery with the British Army in 2007 and began deployment in Afghanistan in June 2007. I deployed in June 2008 and my god did I ever love these things being on my side. They were based with us at FOB Edinburgh and I absolutely loved seeing them do their fire missions. The vehicles you're looking at right now are the exact same thing, GMLRS, however these rockets that they're using on this particular fire mission are training rounds. They're basically very small rockets that can be used to practice their maneuvers, their drills and their fire control systems without having to spend an absolute ton of money on each rocket. They are very expensive weapon systems and to fire them in practice is not always the most cost effective practice. As you can see all 12 of the tubes here have very small diameter rockets inside them. This allows the GMLRS crews to still fire rockets in terms of firing but doesn't allow the remortgaging of Buckingham Palace to do so. It is quite effective and cost efficient for the Royal Artillery to do this and I actually really agree with this. It's very beneficial. Of course it doesn't mean that the crews are never going to fire live heavy duty missiles but it does allow for a lot more practice and for the troops to actually guide onto the weapons platform where they need it to go. The program has been accelerated drastically with the US military for many many years. The GMLRS nicknamed Steel Rain has been upgraded by many different contracts including the High Mars launchers to the US Army and US Marine Corps. One of the unique features of the M270 is that it has no launching rails. Rockets are fired straight from the tubes, which allow them to be disposed of once they're fired of all six rockets in each pack. Rockets can be stored in containers without any maintenance for up to 10 years. Another standard round for this 227mm weapon system is the HE Frag rocket, which is 3.96m long and weighs 306kg. It has a 120kg warhead. The modified M270A1 can also launch the MGM-140 ATAX MS or Army Tactical Missile System tactical missiles. These missiles have a range exceeding 150 kilometers. Two of these missiles can be carried and furthermore a vehicle can carry a mix of either one of these missiles or six of the different rockets. The vehicle is basically modified on the M2 Bradley chassis and therefore fairly fast and nimble cross country. The vehicle is powered by a Cummins VTA 903T diesel engine developing a whopping 500 horsepower. It has an armoured cab protecting the crew against most small arms fire. It is also fitted with an MBC protection system and automatic fire suppression system. Trust me, you're probably going to want to have that automatic fire suppression system considering you have 12 227mm rockets on the back of your pod. I would not want to be anywhere near flames when that thing is beside me. Reloading of the vehicle can be done in roughly 5 to 10 minutes and his assisted integrated crane can really help the crew. Reloads can also be carried out with the M985 Hemet high mobility utility truck. The engine is mated to a cross drive turbo electronically controlled transmission system. The operational range reaches around 400 miles on road at speeds of, of a maximum 40 miles per hour. The running gear consists of six road wheels to each hull side and the drive sprocket at the front and a track idler at the rear. Two track return rollers are also featured to allow the track to keep its tension and to not throw the track. Trust me, throwing a track on this thing would not be a fun time. Beyond its service with the US Army, of course it has been utilised in many different countries and continues to to this day. A very effective weapons platform, GMLRS and MLRS is here to stay. But the future of MLRS is only just begun. There are reports that they are going to produce even further extended range rocket systems for this weapons platform and that is astonishing considering that the new maximum range of this weapons platform is 170 kilometers. I can't even imagine what kind of ranges we're going to be launching at next. Anyway, that's it for today everyone. Thank you once again for joining me on the video. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the M270 MLRS weapon system. And uh, you know, I think these are around to stay. There's a lot of advancements going on in terms of technology 
to extend the missile range, to produce more precise engagements with these kind of missiles, and that's pretty cool. A lot of people, including people of my community, feel like guided munitions or missile artillery or rocket artillery is taking over the history and the traditions of the guns or the projectile firing artillery howitzers. Being that I am a gunner as a reservist in the Canadian military, uh, that's a story for another day. But it, guys, if you did enjoy today's video, please leave me a like and a comment. I'd love to hear your opinion on this vehicle or the video itself. If you wish to follow my channel more and hear more videos that are coming, click the little bell button by the subscribe button so you can actually be notified of when I release videos. If you want to check out any of my merchandise, again, look in the description box below of this video and find all the specific links that you can find to my channel, whether it be buy merchandise from my store, support me in my page or my Patreon website, or even just come hang out on Facebook or Discord where I have my chat room, we play video games and all that good stuff. Thanks again for watching folks and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye bye.